Hello, this is Isaac, and in this tutorial I would like to uh, make a new version of this tutorial that I made about uh, a Webpack config inside WordPress. Uh, this time I'm going to talk about Webpack 4, but my main focus would be about performance. Performance of JavaScript and performance of CSS. So let's begin. So I have here this, uh, this basic WordPress site with a basic theme. Uh, as you can see here, it's looking for some asset files that don't exist yet. Now I have here my setup pretty much ready. Um, these are this is the package.json. These are the two npm scripts that we're going to run, either production or start, to start the Webpack Dev server. I have here a few packages. Um, I'm using the new Babel, Babel 7, and I have this package to help us with async await. This one syntax, uh, syntax dynamic import. This is going to help us with JavaScript performance. This is going to allow us to do a uh, code splitting and. Uh, lazy loading. Um, I'm also using here a Vue. I'm a very big fan of Vue.js. I'm also a very big fan of Tailwind CSS. It's a utility CSS framework. So I'm using all of these to show you how you can improve the performance when you're using them. And that's pretty much in Webpack and the, the Webpack 4. That's the newest one currently. And we're going to use Webpack Merge. This will help us merge Webpack configurations. So let's start with the main webpack on fig.js, which is this. So first, I'm going to check what's the mode config is going to be. Is it going to be development or production? Now I have a mode configs, a webpack configs folder. Uh, here it is. It has development and production. Now these must match this one. Okay, so. If it's development, then it's going to call the development.js file. If it's production, it's going to call the production.js file. Okay, it has to match. As you can see here, it's relying on it. Webpack configs, env.mode.js. So it's relying on the name. So we grab that. And then we're basically going to first, this is the default configuration. It's going to always run, always exist. So we have our entry app. We have here an app, an admin. I'm not using the admin here. I'm only including it because in WordPress it makes sense to have uh, assets separated for the admin, for the dashboard. Okay, but I'm not really using it. But this is the asset files. So we have here the CSS with app and admin and the JS with app and admin with a few boilerplate, which I'm going to go over with. Our output is just going to be the name, so it's going to be either app.js or admin.js. The path that we want it to be is in public JS. This is why you know it's looking for it on public JS and public CSS. It will be uh, chunk file name. Yeah, we're going to get into this. This is just for view and plugins that we're going to use is a progress plugin and the view loader plugin. Again, for we need to load that view files. So this is our, the regular, and then of course. Uh, then we are merging it, right? Mode config environment. This is we're going to merge it because everything it's it's included in the webpack merge function. Okay, so this is a very uh, useful utility. Now for development, it's very basic. We don't need to optimize anything in development mode. Um, so what we have here is the public path. This is the default for a webpack dev server. It's port 8080. This is going to run on all the CSS files, CSS, SAS, SCSS, and it's going to run all these loaders. And at the end, it's going to run the style loader. So style loader is basically going to inject style tags to your page, which means that you don't have a CSS file that you need to serve. All, you, all you're serving is the, your JS file, and, that, and Webpack will inject all the styles to the page. Now, this is very bad for production, but for development, it's fine. And this is the dev server. We're going to use hot shoe for hot module reload. And these are the plugins for hot module reload. Very basic. Now for the production part. And uh, here we need optimization. So we need to uh, minify everything. So, and we need to extract our CSS file. So we're going to use this plugin to extract our CSS to a separate file. So if it's app.js, we'll extract it to app.css if it has any CSS files over there. And if it's admin, it's going to be admin.css. So this is why instead of style order, we're using this. And this is the plugin to optimize. So we're going to minify the CSS. Now, we don't need to minify JavaScript. Webpack will do it for us. 
because we have a webpack minus p it's you know it, it signifies that it's, it's in production and we're also specifying it here so webpack will simply minify it for us this purge css i'm going to talk about it this basically removes unused unused css but we will talk about it so that's uh, pretty much it oh and here the public path is different as you can see because when you're into production mode there is no local host 8080 there is your actual website and uh, this is also this is only important again for code splitting and lazy loading and i'm going to talk about it uh, actually right now so i have a basic boilerplate in the app.js i'm including view i'm also importing the css file okay and i'm importing this component welcome that i have it's uh, let me just remove these it's basically going to say hello webpack4 and nothing much else i have this lazy lazy.js file is just going to console.log that he's lazy here in the functions.php and currently i'm in production mode here so i'm going to public js app but otherwise i would just need this and i will comment out these two when i'm in development but right now i want to talk, focus on the production because this is the best way for you to show you how to improve your performance so let's first run npm run start production and let's see what's going to happen so npm run production now this is going to compile all our files it's going to minify them and at the end we will see all the file sizes so let's see what we have here so we have the css file is 1.9 that's very low the app.js well that makes sense it's including the view file of course this this is not uh, gzipped so take that into consideration and this is actually empty it's just webpack boilerplate so actually in our app.css we're including tailwind here okay and uh, you can see here you can have in the documentation how to install it but this this shouldn't be only 1.91 uh, something is wrong here obviously and you know, i actually need production.js let's see what happens if i don't run this plugin let's comment this out let's run npm run production again let's see what happens and notice this is 1.91 oh this is very bad we have here a warning a big warning and it's 291 that's a major difference so what happened here so basically this plugin once you use it uh, on its basics and by the way you can uh, see a controlling file size it will show you how to use it it's going to scan some files that you're going to give it i'm going to give it my to scan my php files and my, my view files notice that i'm jumping up directory because i'm inside the webpack configs folder so i, I want to jump a directory up uh, it will scan all these files and it will and it will see are you using any of the classes that are provided to you by tailwind if you're not using anything it's just going to remove it it's just going to simply compare and remove what you're not using so that's why it didn't even load it when we were here uh, because we're not using tailwind at all currently uh, so now when i compiled it back and i'm just going to run the production again and once while i run it let's go over into index.php file and let me just add here a class of mt4 so the margin top and text center these are both classes that are provided to us by tailwind so i'm going to save this and i'm going to refresh the page here and i get here hello webpack4 but uh, it doesn't seem like it's working All right so let's uh, run production again let's see now because remember this these didn't exist when we compiled it so but now they do exist so now let's see oh we, we see here a file size difference so i'm guessing that they are now included let's refresh the page again and they are indeed included hello webpack4 okay this is uh, very good for us so as you can see it's really working really working very well okay um so okay so this is for the css part okay and don't listen to people telling you this is a big framework big large framework that doesn't matter you have purge css it will solve most of your problems okay now let's go to our javascript file um, 
So we have here our app.js file, it includes the two files. It's one is a lazy file, which is just console.log this, and the welcome component. Currently, they are all loaded. Now I have two pages here, and I'm gonna get rid of this uh, lazy load. Okay. Now, let's say here in this page, I only want to console.log I'm lazy, but I don't want this component. I'm not using this welcome component, only in the home page I'm using it. But in the home page, I don't want this console.log I'm lazy. So how, how can we solve this? So code splitting, lazy loading, this is going to solve it for us. By the way, you have to have this babel.rc file so you can use these. And this is very crucial for us. So now let me paste a, a bit of snippet and we're gonna go over it. So I, I will remove both of these. I wanna delete these. And I'm gonna use this one, right? This will basically store them and we can get rid of this as well. This will basically store them as, as like a, as a function. So now um, notice that I'm actually have here the page, right? Lazy load and index. So I can do something like this. I can do if, if window.page equals equals to index, I want to load this component and this is how I can do it. Okay, this is a, like view also helps you here, but basically it's going to uh, load it this way. But if um, the page is lazy load, I want to call lazy. Okay, if you want, you can also attach then and listen to it when it's done. But in this case, uh, we really don't need to. Oh, let's save this. Oh, it's a minor syntax error. Okay. Now let's compile. Now notice here, when, when we first compiled, we had only three assets, admin.js, which we're not using, app.js and app.css. Now let's run this again and see what's going to happen. It's going to be quite interesting. And that's the key for performant JavaScript. Not performant code itself, not, not, it's not going to make your JavaScript itself faster, but your app faster. It's going to be faster. Okay, so what do we have here? We have here two files that were created. Now, when we looked at the uh, webpack config file, we had this chunk file name. So it had a name and a content hash.js. So as you can see, it's a pattern that resembles to this. This is the name is the number, and this is the content hash, content hash. So it basically created two, two file bundlers, you can say that, two files. And each of them for this, for each of these modules. This is one module, this is another module. So for each of them, you have a chunk file. Now, let's see what, so here we have hello webpack 4. Okay, now let's see where does this exist. Okay, so a basic search tells us it's in 3.72 dd. 3.72 dd. So it only exists in this specific file. That's where it exists because this is the, and it doesn't exist in my compiled app.js, right? So I have my public folder, I have the JS. It, it's not here. It will only be here. If I go to hello, as you can see, there it is. So effectively, the app.js uh, file is going to be of smaller size. Obviously, now you see it's larger because uh, we really it's not really significant. But in general, it's going to be smaller. And we have these two chunk files that, that we need to, we will need to upload them to production and we're going to need to serve them. But now, Let's take a look what's going to happen here. So if I refresh this page, I don't see I'm lazy. If I refresh this page, I see I'm lazy, but I don't see the component. The component doesn't exist. Now, if I take a look at the, uh, let's see if I have three, yeah, here it is. You see, it's loading this chunk file separately. It's loading it. That's why the public path is very important to get it right. If it's wrong, it's not going to be loaded. So this is a separate file that is being loaded on demand, okay? And just to prove it to you again, if I'm just gonna change this, it doesn't exist, 
and, and it's not loaded you see it's not loaded it's that simple so basically uh, as you can see here this is going to solve you a lot of problems this is really good so now if I'm going to refresh the page no, no, not here and it exists again so what we have done just right now uh, I've showed you a way to load your assets only when you need them exactly the same way with CSS CSS is a bit different CSS you're just removing what you're not using uh, but here actually we're lazy loading what you need because imagine if you have a huge amount of JavaScript code you don't want to load them on the first then the initial load you only want to load them wherever you need them and Vue helps you to, to solve this and also Webpack itself helps you to solve this now I want to just show you how the uh, hot module reload works so let's run npm run start we're going to need to uh, uncomment this and comment these it's going to save this so if I can close this if I refresh the page here you're going to see hot module replacement enabled so let me just change this quickly to a smiley and as you can see the page wasn't reloaded right it's right on the spot it changed okay so this is how it, it would work and pretty much once you're done you're just gonna close it and you're gonna run npm run production again and you're gonna bring these back to normal and it's it will just work itself out so to sum up to, to, in, in terms of CSS, you want to use Perch CSS to remove unused CSS. When it comes to JavaScript, you want to lazy load, you know, to load it on demand on the page, on the specific page, or under or under the specific condition that you need to load it. Don't just load everything, okay? And Webpack makes it very easy to not uh, have to do it, okay? So if you're not using Webpack, uh, really dive into it. It's really not complicated, okay? Yeah, I, you're going to have a link with the repo below, so you can have all this code. It's it's pretty much a working setup that you can use for yourself, okay? You don't need to think much. For most basic parts, it's going to work well. And these are the examples that you can look for. And uh, pretty much, pretty much that's it. So hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.